Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about motion graphic design. So motion graphic design is a really interesting and specialized field of graphic design because it bleeds over into animation and video production, which you know I'm all about those things and I love them. And I've actually done a few motion graphics that I've put up here on the channel for you to check out and just see my work and just showcase uh, what I've been doing for a couple of people. So that's pretty cool, and I enjoy doing that kind of work. I don't get as many requests for that as I might like, so my experience in it has a ceiling that I'm going to be trying to raise, and that's actually gonna be easier than I thought because I'm getting involved with more people in the YouTube space, so I actually have some more um, potential contracts in place to get motion graphics work uh, through other YouTubers who are going to build up their channel or scale up their production values and want intros, lower thirds, and things like that. So I want to talk about those kind of things in this video while introducing you into the concept of motion graphics. So primarily when we're talking about graphic design and motion graphics, a lot of times we're talking about animated logos as well as lower thirds that you might see in YouTube. And sometimes we're talking about uh, fly-ins during videos that inform you of things that are going on on screen. So these are things that are all considered motion graphics. They're graphics that otherwise would be static that we've added some kind of animation to. They don't have to be anything as elaborate as the AFX Films intro that I did. Um, or even the stuff with Digital Calm. They could actually be super simple, like the lower thirds fly in motion graphic that has my name and title and description that comes in at the beginning of my videos. I do that using a combination of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro rather than doing anything advanced in After Effects. And the reason is because it's super simple to just do what's called a tween, which is meant for in-between and framing, um, as far as taking that still graphic and having it animated come in, whether that's as a fly-in or whether that's as a fade-in or fade-out. Either way, this is motion graphics. Um, sometimes I will do fly-ins when I'm doing lists of things that take place in a video. Um, you've seen me do that before when talking about different subjects on graphic design that are comprised of a list, and if I'm lazy, they will just pop in and maybe fade out. But when I want to get super fancy, they'll fly in and then fade out or fly in from one direction and go out in the other. Again, I can do that either natively in Adobe Premiere just by doing text titles and then animated them using the effects and motion panel in Adobe Premiere rather than doing any crazy After Effects or Flash stuff. Now, in terms of how I learned motion graphics, I originally learned motion graphics from doing um, animated stuff in Adobe back when Adobe had an animated panel called um, Image Ready in Photoshop where you do basic um, frame animations for animated banner ads, uh, which was really annoying in some ways back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s. Um, later, that just became the animation panel um, in CS3, I believe. They phased out Image Ready and it just became the animation panel, uh, so that was cool. Um, I was doing Adobe Flash stuff um, in college and then actually uh, with my first official job as a web designer at a company, I was doing a lot of uh, Adobe Flash animation and development and I got more advanced in motion graphics there. Um, I was doing some basic animation stuff. Back in the day, I don't know if you guys know this, but there was a point where I wanted to be an illustrator and a cartoonist. So uh, when I was first getting introduced into animation programs like Flash, uh, it was the beginning of uh, web animation really taking off, and I was really excited about that. Um, but I ultimately decided not to go in that direction for various different reasons that I will cover in a whole other video. I promise to give you that background. But ultimately, uh, I ended up going graphic design. I'm happy about that decision. I love the way that things turned out for me. And I still was interested in animation, so I started learning more about Adobe After Effects. Um, Flash is still good for general animation, but for motion graphics that are going to be applied to video, I highly recommend that you either do stuff using um, Premiere Pro combined either with Adobe um, Illustrator or Photoshop for you know vector graphic purposes for Illustrator for logos, um, or if you're going to do advanced motion graphics, obviously you want to do something with um, either Adobe After Effects or even Apple Motion um, as a cheaper alternative that's still very high end. So those are some options you can use in terms of the programs. There are obviously other programs for motion graphics out there. I will make sure I leave a lot of those links in the description below so you can check that information out. Uh, but primarily for the sake of this video and my general workflow, we're going to stick to the Adobe stuff. So like I said, I primarily use After Effects when I want to do 
uh, motion graphics logos and title intros um, like I did for you know various different people and if I want to do a fancy particle effects that stuff is all there that's the software you usually want to learn and it can be really intimidating so I recommend using the Adobe After Effects Classroom in a book I have a link to that in the description below um, there's also tutorials on Adobe After Effects my Adobe After Effects tutorials, I will probably do a few on motion graphics and title intros. A lot of my stuff focuses around visual effects because for uh, my own uh, movies and music video stuff, I want to get more into that. So that's kind of where I'm going with Adobe After Effects. And that's why I also try to keep my motion graphics super simple using Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and sometimes Illustrator, just depending on what I have going on. Now in terms of motion graphics techniques, you have to uh, worry a lot about precise timing and you have to worry about the actual motion. So unlike regular flat 2D design, you're working in a fourth dimension, which is time. So you have to think about uh, how something begins, how something ends, transitions, um, consistency. There's a lot going on there. And uh, I'm going to do a breakdown video where I talk about the principles of motion graphics. This is just kind of introducing the concept and the career applications and just working you through like some basic things you need to know like what programs you use for motion graphics like Apple Motion, Adobe After Effects, potentially Adobe Flash, even Adobe Premiere, and uh, Adobe Photoshop. Those are all options you can use for motion graphics. You can do web motion graphics using Adobe Edge Animate. So we've covered some of the software there. In terms of practical applications, uh, obviously if you're going to get into the video editing space or into the YouTube space, there's some definite opportunity there to make money. Um, in terms of careers, you would be a motion graphics designer. Uh, you potentially could do that under the title of a video editor who has skills in motion graphic design. And certainly you could do that as an animator with skills in motion graphic design. Um, and you'd be doing that for uh, possible show intros, uh, title treatments, music video stuff, lyric videos if you want to go into the local market and try and um, do videos for artists. So there's a lot that can be done there. For documentary stuff, it could come in handy for doing people's titles, descriptions, uh, pointing out things that are going on. Obviously, there's a big market in video infographics, so if you get very advanced in motion graphics, you could go that route, and there's a ton of money in it. You can get like $5,000 for those kind of things, or you can make templates and sell them online. You know, there's just tons of opportunity. Some useful tools if you want to learn more about how to do um, animated motion graphics, you can check out videocopilot.com. They also have a bunch of plugins for you. You can obviously get um, templates and things like that from uh, Video Hive, which is part of Envato, so I highly recommend you do that. Again, I'll have links to all this stuff in the description below. Well, I hope this helped you guys understand some of the basic things about uh, motion graphics design. Again, I will do more detailed and elaborate videos on this subject because um, I'd really like to delve more into it. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna cut this video here. If you have questions, definitely leave that stuff in the comment section below, and I'll try and answer every question that I possibly can. Or if you want to get a question uh, to me in real time, you can uh, tweet at me at Roberto Blake in Twitter, and I usually am really good about responding there as well. Um, use the hashtag createawesome and uh, motion graphics to make sure that I'm getting it. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. Check out the stuff in my motion graphics portfolio. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today.